Hello and welcome to A Word on the Word with Les and Tracy King. And in this session, we're going to be looking at being a disciple of Jesus. And how being a disciple of Jesus means you take the time to learn about the kingdom of God and then you help someone else be a disciple of Jesus as well. That's right. Now in this session, we're going to be looking at some verses that emphasize the idea of why we should be a student of the Bible and a disciple of Jesus and not just get saved at the cross and sit around and play like a harp or something on a cloud, right? So <laughs> so let's go to our first biblical thought today, and that's trained in righteousness or steeped in religion. So we're in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, where it says, All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, correction, training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequately equipped for every good work. That's right. This verse tells us that the entire Bible was given to us by God so that we would learn about him. That's right. And if you're a Christian believer, you should be learning about God and being a disciple of Jesus. Right. It's simply not enough to believe right. that God exists. We need to transform our lives to be like Jesus. Absolutely. Jesus didn't die on the cross so we could all be these spiritual bumps on a log, folks, all right? <laughs> he came into the world so that we would be restored back to our original design and purpose as being his children. That's right. And if you're a child of God and you belong to the family of Jesus, you represent <laughs> your family and you are engaged in making sure that the family business is successful. That's right. And I bet you're wondering what God's family business <laughs> is all about and what are the goods and services being provided? That's right. Well, it's about loving others and pointing them back to God through the work of Jesus at the cross. That's exactly right. Now, our scripture for this biblical thought says that all scripture is profitable for God's people. So let's go make a profit in the currency of love for our Father. Right. Let's multiply love, multiply love and let's really do a good work so that everyone sees that there's an abundance of love and profitability in the kingdom of God. That's right. All right, we're going to move on to our next biblical thought, and that is meeting a pressing need or proceeding as an unfruitful tree. Now, we're reading in Titus chapter 3, verse 14. It says, Our people must also learn to engage in good deeds to meet pressing needs so that they will not be unfruitful. That's right. Here we see the Apostle Paul telling Titus that God's people, they need to learn to do good deeds. That's right. Where we can make a mistake as a new Christian is thinking that all the work that needs to be done was done and it's complete we That's have right. to do nothing <laughs> but yeah but the truth of the matter is is that the work has just begun at the cross for That's us right. right you see jesus completed his work at the cross and once we've accepted him as our savior it's time for us to begin a work in our own selves that's right now listen we're not talking about working to get saved or for no. salvation or working for god to love us more right no, we're not god completed that work at the cross for all humans and he loves us all equally right and that's even for the unbeliever let's right. be clear here god loved us all so much he died on the cross before we were all believers, so just because you become a Christian or you do more work that all of a sudden God's loving you more than other Christians or he's loving you more than the unbeliever, right. it's just kind of false. So I think we need to keep that in perspective. It is false. <laughs> the work we have as a Christian really starts with the work we need to do inside each one of us. That's right. And in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 20 through and 24, it says the following. You were taught to put off your former way of life, your old self, which is corrupting you by its deceitful desires, and to renew yourself by the spirit in your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness mm. and holiness. Now, it's a critical point for everyone to understand that we're saved as sinners at the cross and by our own motivation mm -hmm. and efforts, yeah. we allow the Holy Spirit to transform our hearts. That's right, and, and also to transform our minds, right? right? Don't forget the mind. <laughs> we must learn to engage in good deeds so that we're not unfruitful. That's right, now we all have a choice to participate in the kingdom and first it begins by choosing to be a disciple of right. Jesus and not just sitting around warming a pew in your church, folks, that's all right. right? And that will move us to our next biblical thought. That's right. And that's learn to be a seeker and not a sleeper. That's right. So we're in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 17, and that is learn to do good, seek justice, reprove the ruthless, right. defend the orphan, and plead for the case of the widow. Right. We see once again that the Bible is telling us to learn. And what we need to realize yeah. is that growing as a Christian means you're always learning. That's right. And we may understand that we need to stand on the side of justice and reprove the ruthless, but you know what? We don't always know how to do that very skillfully. No, and also in a loving way that wins over those who are unjust and ruthless. 
That's right. So many think we need to fight battles and destroy the enemy at all costs if we love God. <laughs> Yet what we need to do is to draw people to Jesus. And what we actually end up doing without skill and by running into battle and just destroying everything in its path <laughs> is we actually push people away from Jesus. And God really wants us to focus on skill and learning so that we draw people to Jesus. That's right. The ones that are being abused and the ones that are doing the abusing, That's right, absolutely. we can't forget about them, right? Yep. Now, Christians are not supposed to stand by quietly, right? As right. innocent people are being mistreated. We That's need right. to get up and do something. That's right. So, you know, look at this. We're not <laughs> supposed to store up food, retreat behind barricaded compounds, and hide from the world and its <laughs> troubles, right? Now, the fact is that if you're a disciple of Jesus, you don't go running from the trouble, but yeah. you run into Straight the trouble, it. right? Yeah. So that you can bring the peace and hope to that situation. That's right. And you can do all of this while defending the orphan and standing up for the widows. Right. That doesn't change. <laughs> An unlearned, unskilled Christian can bring peace and hope to those who are being mistreated. That's right. But what God really wants is for you to be learned and skilled and develop a skill that brings peace and hope right. to those who are mistreating others. So yes, you as an unskilled Christian can go and help the innocent, which is good. Right. But what God wants is he wants us to develop a skill level and knowledge base that allows us to go in help bring peace and safety to those who are being mistreated. But he also wants those that are perpetrating evil and who are sinners, who are lost, to actually see what's going on and actually come to the saving knowledge of Jesus at the cross so that we've got really the impact of the gospel and the power of the cross doing work here. Right. And we're not just running in like bulls in a china shop, you know, destroying all the evil while we save the innocent. Uh, he came skillfully, and didn't just kill everyone that uh, that disagreed with him. He came for us that we were sinners and everything. That's so I a, think that's important. That's a tough concept, you yeah, know. It is. It's the pray for your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, yep. love your enemies. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's really tough. People forget about that part, and they, you know, of course, Absolutely. run towards the innocent, which right. is natural, I think. Yep. But let's go on to our next biblical thought, and okay. that's practice produces a godly presence. So we're in Philippians chapter 4 verse 9 it says the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. That's right now as a disciple we need to keep in mind that what you've learned from the Bible your pastor or from the Holy Spirit or even from a Christian mentor is absolutely useless unless you put it into practice. That's right. And I'm sure we all know someone who's very knowledgeable about the Bible and who can recite verses from memory, and uh, but they seem like really anxious all the time to express to everybody everything they know, or right? Or maybe they're unsettled in their demeanor and constantly looking for the next gold nugget of knowledge to possess. That's right. And so the Bible here addresses this in James chapter 1, verse 24, where it says, For anyone who hears the word but doesn't carry it out, is like a man who looks at himself in the mirror and after observing himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks, he like. looks like. If we don't do what the Bible says, we'll not be able to experience the fullness of God in our lives and we'll easily forget who we are in him. That's right. Now, God is always with us, but the Bible explains that the God of peace will be with us when we apply the Bible to our lives. And the God of peace will bring peace to our souls when the sinful world brings turmoil. That's right. We want to thank you for tuning into this teaching, and we do want to invite you to come visit us at a wordontheword.tv. And remember, go serve the King by, by serving, serving others. others. Thank you for joining Les and Tracy King for A Word on the Word. Visit a wordontheword.tv to receive their latest audio or video broadcast. A Word on the Word is sponsored by First Century Ministry 